Hi, my name is Byron Martin here at Logie's Greenhouses. Today we're going to be talking about a really large plant called Calacacia gigantea. And this is a native of Southeast Asia. It puts out these immense leaves and it does it in one season. So this young plant was put into the ground as a potted plant in a 12 inch pot. It was probably about two, three feet high with a couple of leaves on it. We had wintered it over, so this is its second year that it's come through. And we planted it in the ground here at the danger of frost was gone in mid-May. And um, this is the growth that's happened since then. So we've put out at least um, five or six very large leaves once it's got its feet on the ground. And, um, and it's still going, but we're at the end of its growing season right now. So this is the um, about as large as it's going to get. Uh, the plant will not be brought in. We have down in the base here a very small offshoot, which it can do, that's coming up out of the base. And that would be something that we'll dig up and we'll save that and put that in a pot, allow it to grow for um, the remainder of the season, which is only about another month or two to establish it. We'll keep it in a greenhouse. Um, they can be kept in cold greenhouses. We actually maintain these in warmer ones um, with fairly good light. And there's a lot of calicaceous can go through a dormancy with little or no light in quite cool temperatures. But as we're digging this young plant out of the ground, we want to actually get it stabilized. Could have been dug a little bit earlier, but we have the advantage of having greenhouses, so we're going to bring it through that way. And then next year, that plant, which is going to be, again, in about a 12-inch pot by the time May comes along, will be set in the same spot. The key to making it do this, actually, is fertilizer. So um, our irrigation system has a constant feed in it of a very um, low level of fertilizer, and this plant is watered most every day. Calicaceous tend to be sort of um, like the taro root. They tend to be sort of wet-loving plants when they're in active growth. That's actually the part that made the plant grow so large was the water and fertilizer that it had all summer long. As you can see, we get this kind of um, yellowing on some of the older leaves. That's um, very typical of this plant, at least in this climate, and um, it's really nothing that we worry about too much. This is one of the first large leaves to come up, and it got beat up pretty bad, but these leaves are actually looking pretty good, some of these young ones that are right here. Um, as you can see, the plant is in flower. We have um, blooms coming on it. These are the white um, spates that come out. Um, very typical of the aeroid family, or Aeraceae, Aeraceae family. Really, there aren't any insects or disease problems with this plant. Um, the key would be getting it through the winter time as a young plant where you don't have a lot of light. So you have to make sure you watch that you don't rot the um, root system. It actually has kind of a large fleshy root that's down underneath that sort of the main root of which the feeder roots branch off of. And you just want to make sure that stays healthy. In the winter time, it's really you're not trying to grow foliage or make the plant big. You're just trying to save the plant and hold the plant until you can get it outside in the summertime. Thank you for watching today. There's a little bit of information on how to grow Calicacia gigantea, one of the true giants of our tropical collection. If you'd like more information, go to logis.com.